man, I hate to say this, but I used yeah. to take the bottles of wine myself after a while. Yeah. And at 11 years old, I used to go and get drunk on the rooftop of my building mm. with some of my other friends growing up. And, uh, and I became an alcoholic mm. right then, cool. you know? Welcome to Harrison Family Values, the podcast, where we explore faith, family, fatherhood, manhood, and marriage with today's guest, Pastor Jorge Santa Maria, a devoted husband, father, and spiritual leader. Join us as Pastor Jorge shares his incredible journey of redemption through the transformative power of faith in Christ. From his role as a pastor to hosting a podcast with his wife, Pastor Jorge's story is a testament to the enduring strength of family values and the unwavering grace of God. Stay tuned for an inspiring conversation filled with hope, love, and the pursuit of a meaningful life in Christ. Pastor Jorge, thank you so much for joining me, man. I appreciate you being here. No and, doubt. And I'm my, happy to be here, man. this conversation, man. So uh, thank you. I know uh, you had uh, uh, a recent uh, recent bout to get here, but I appreciate you coming and uh, you being here on the Harrison Family Values, the podcast. Definitely, man. I'm really excited to be here. And, you know, uh, as it happens many times, you know, when you're doing God's work mm. and when you're definitely like moving in, in, in the will of God, things try to jump in. Yeah, yeah. The enemy tries to come. Yeah, yeah. But, but God is greater. Yeah, amen. Amen. Greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. I, I, amen. 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 And you're here, man. So I really appreciate it. Definitely really appreciate it. We had a chance to, to meet at the, the current church we're, we're attending. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And, and you're over there like bringing a lot of people to church. Yeah, I, half, the, I, half the congregation now is, is there because they met you either at Walmart or some some store or restaurant or at the at the <laughs> at the pet shop at the pet fish shop at the fish, fish store. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're about your as they say, you're on your business when it comes to Jesus. Yeah, definitely. You know, like uh, I, I feel like God's called me into this uh, specific ministry to go out there and evangelize the people and to bring people yeah. in into His kingdom. But it ain't me. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just using my hands because I, I, you know, I just give my hands up to him and he's the one who's, who moves me. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I move according to what he tells me. Yeah, so. yeah. Amen. And that's, and, and that's I think, a, a thing. Like, so this fa this channel, my, my podcast is, is about promoting faith, family, fatherhood, manhood, and marriage. And when it comes to faith in Christ, you don't see a lot of men taking their faith to the level where they are excited about telling others about Jesus, you know? Um, and in fact, like, if I, if I can be frank, some of the men that I've, I've spoken to, they don't necessarily see uh, the Christian faith as one that exudes masculinity. It, 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 they, they, they don't see it as something they can, they can vibe with. I'm, and I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't grow up in church per se, right? But uh, when I would go visit my godmother, we would go to church every Sunday when I was there. Yeah, my godfather wouldn't come though, unless it was like a special occasion. But my godfather wouldn't come, and um, and to be honest with you, as I look back, I didn't see a lot of men in the church, um, but like men like yourself, out there, uh, what 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 makes your perspective different than a lot of the other men out there when it comes to your faith in Christ? Well, I I, I really believe that. Um that it, it, it all came full circle, right? Mm. Uh, I grew up in a Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was that I was an altar boy and I did it all in that way, in that fashion. And I was like, I know I'm part of the E, Spiritu Santo. I was doing the whole yeah. Roman Catholic thing. And, then, um, and I say it's a thing because, um, because uh, you know, as I got older, I learned a lot of difference between what's really in the Word of God yeah, yeah. And all the additional things that get added, mm. you know. So, yeah, yeah. Um, no disrespect to any of the people who are Catholic, but yeah. but if we look into it, God God made that one word of God, the Bible. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it says in one one, that was the word that was with him, and he was the word. Right. Yeah. So, all these additional books, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they 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 may be inspired, but yeah. we don't know for certain mm -hmm. by who. Yeah. So, going back to that initial stage. I, I had a fight with God, mm. you know. I had a wrestle and I struggled, and I realized that being in the world was not the way to go. Yeah. Uh, but but as a young a young man, I became resentful mm. about God because 
being in the Catholic faith, uh, and as an altar boy, I would see the priest at the end. Back then, they used to actually drink wine out of a chalice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And at the end of the mass, right, he would be like, he would look around, and they would pour all the wine that was left, and they would just drink it. I said, this ain't the blood of Christ. Mm, yeah. This ain't the blood of Jesus. Yeah, you know, I think it's because, you know? I, if I remember correctly, I think it's, that's the... The, the ritual, like they can't leave anything left. That's the whole thing. So I have to thing. drink it. But in my, yeah. you know, I'm 11 years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so watch, like, yo, I don't, and yo, I haven't been in the fa word. Fa I, father, father, <laughs> father back there getting lit right now. Yeah. And then whatever was left in the bottle, <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. see them take it. And sometimes I would see them take it like past the rectory, you know, mm -hmm. past the rectory mm -hmm. and like kind of like towards where their, where their, yeah. their dormitories were. And I yeah. was like, yeah, he's that a, other bottle ain't blessed. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, he's so, about to get lit. So, uh, man, I hate to say this, but I yeah. used to take the bottles of wine myself after a while. Yeah. And at 11 years old, I used to go and get drunk on the rooftop of my building mm. with some of my other friends growing up. And uh, and I became an alcoholic mm. right then, cool. you know. So it's almost like the very I'm welcome, thing that, you know. That, well, you know, what, and that's the thing. Like when you go into um, something as sacred as a communion and you're not doing it correctly or right or not taught how to do it right yeah it it could the, the bible says if you don't don't do it correctly it can lead to damnation like that's a that's a serious thing i mean they call them spirits right yeah and <laughs> it's a reason why yeah but yeah man and 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 so i i started you know i still always had belief i believe there's a higher power i believe there's god mm -hmm. uh um but and 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 I would see all these different paintings, right? And this goes to speak. Now I'm speaking towards like what you said that, that there's a masculinity that's not there. Yeah. Like it's, that there's more. That it's. And I would see these paintings of a of a Jesus who was like, <laughs> you know, and he's yeah. like, and he would be like, yeah. very soft. Yeah, yeah. And he was very skinny and puny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you know, as I got older, right, uh, I started to question my faith. Mm -hmm. and I started going into. Islam. I started going to all these different religions, right? And when I turned thirty, I I I, I had this real serious bout with God, mm -hmm. and I and and I was going through an emergency, yeah. like a small crisis at home, yeah. and I was uh, I, I I became homeless, mm -hmm. and I lived in my car. And out of being proud, like guys are, like how we are, we're men and we get like proud. I didn't want anybody to know that I was living this life. Yeah. And so what ended up happening was that I then um, would like take the opportunity when my brother wasn't around, be like, hey, I'm gonna stop by your house. I would go and take a shower, mm -hmm. change my clothes, wash, do a quick wash, put it all back in my car. So I was yeah. living out of my car. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I would do the same at my mom's. And then I had a dog that I had from when I was living. You know, I was married, then I became divorced. Yeah. Right? But this is during that period of time where I was separated now and I didn't have a place to live. And I, I started like one day, uh, a friend, a very good friend of mine, Matt, Matt um, he, he gave me a book and he told me, hey, write all your resentments in this book mm -hmm. and give them to God, lay him at his feet. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that book for three months. I carried it around with me. From, from house to house, yeah. <laughs> from, you know, in my car. And I was seeing this orange book, right, yeah. marbleized book. And then one day something happened with, with, with this dog that I had, and it got sick. And I had to make a choice, yeah. right, either to go to work mm -hmm. and make money, right, because I was working as a freelance uh, videographer, yeah. photographer at the time. And I had to make a choice, and my daughter had, I had promised my daughter, the dog's going to be okay, mm -hmm. you know, because at the time I, I had one daughter, and she's like, Daddy, is the dog going to die? And I said, no, it's not going to die, he's going to be okay. Yeah. And it goes to speak to the power of words, right, as well, as God, you know, we'd make it, and it's made in his likeness. And, and somehow I, I knew that the dog was going to be okay, but he mm -hmm. didn't look like he was going to be okay. Yeah. Inside, against everything I believed, I, I really thought he was going to die, but I spoke yeah, yeah. faith, right? Yeah. And I didn't even know I was doing it then, but... I was already like really starting to to, and it, to to come to understand who God was, and God had been leading me this way. Mm -hmm. That that the dog actually got sick, not because it was by chance, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So I'm there and I'm thinking, should I go to work? I want to provide for my daughter still, even though I'm separated. Yeah. Um, or should I do the next right thing, which is 
take care of the dog, yeah. and then find another work on you know getting another freelance gig, yeah. right? So I I decided to take care of the dog because I promised my daughter that the dog would be okay. Yeah. So I had to choose: do I go over the money that's going to be able to provide for my daughter, or do I um, have a, a a greater impact on her, like? psychologically this is what i was thinking at the time right yeah. so i started saying to myself you know do the next right thing do the next right thing this is a living creature mm-hmm. and yeah. but while i was there taking care of the dog now yeah i start writing i see this orange book this orange mom book, and i start writing all my resentments i mean i mean from childhood yeah right i mean resentful i started with my my dad mm. then my mom mm. then uh a cat we had Named Blackie, then Odie. Was, black, was a black cat. He was all a black cat, yeah, right? I knew that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start writing like every single reason. I'm emptying out the gut, right, yeah. into this book, yeah. and I split it up into parts, like what part I had in it. You know, when I originally heard my friend tell me, my original, my, my friend Matt tell me, yeah. you should write what part you had in the resentment, mm. and how are you are you gonna give are you gonna go back and make an amends with this person, yeah. or are you gonna give it to God because you don't have contact with them. Mm. And I was like, Ugh, I, I believed in God, but at this point, I didn't know what God to believe in, mm. right? And I knew it was a higher power, yeah. right? Because yeah, yeah. I had lost faith because I had seen these images of a weak God and, 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 like of a God. And, and then, you know, it dawned on me just after this, right? That God is actually very strong. That Jesus Christ Himself was yeah. not uh, as had they depict Him. No, He wasn't. You know what I mean? So, so, so now I start writing this book, and before I knew it, it has seventy-eight pages yeah. written. Yeah. And so wow. I start talking to God, and I start screaming at Him, and I start saying to Him, "If you're a real God, like people say that you're a real God, mm-hmm. then talk to me now." Now I need you to talk to me now, and I was and I was coming to him with all my gut and all my heart. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know much about the Bible then, yeah. but as I read on now, right, yeah. I understand that we have to talk with God this way. He is our Father, right? Mm-hmm. And I start like I'm like talking to him with all my heart, with like just one to one, and I start telling him, and I start asking him to show himself, whether it's going to be by a sound. Or whether it's gonna be a burning bush. Now I'm being yeah. sarcastic yeah, yeah, with yeah, him, right? Yeah. This is gonna be a burning bush that would be dope. outside the door. Yeah. That would be dope. If I could walk in and see a burning bush. <laughs> of I mean, I gotta take my shoes off if I make sure my dogs are clean. But yeah. So I, I was like, uh, I, whether you're gonna be a burning bush, whether you're gonna send somebody to the door, yeah. whether you're gonna do whatever it is that you're gonna do, yeah. I need you to talk to me now. Mm. Like now, now. I put a demand on him. Yeah. You know. And I took the book and I said, I'm laying this at your feet. I don't know where your feet are, but I know this is at your feet. And I slammed it against the table at my mom's house. I remember going, whap. And then it was 1027 in the morning. I'd been taking, I've been giving this dog injections in the mouth with, yeah. uh, with this stuff to, yeah, so, to get it better, right? Like a syringe. Yeah. And then uh, full of like, this goo that I made up because the vet was telling me that them doing this whole process would have charged me forty seven hundred dollars I didn't have. Yeah. So I said I could do this at home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so every hour I was giving five cc's, five cc's of this stuff, mm-hmm. and it was I've been up all night doing this every hour. Yeah. And now it's ten thirty seven. I mean ten ten twenty seven. And at ten thirty two in the morning, I hear a knock on the door. Mm-hmm. Not my home. This is my mom's place. Yeah. So I called my mom. I was like, you're expecting anybody? Are you expecting anybody? Because I didn't want them to hear me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Because then I would have to open up. Oh, yeah, yeah, we hear you in there. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, and my mom was like, no. I was like, oh, okay. All right, bye. And so I hang up on her. And and I hear the knock again. Yeah. Knock, knock, knock. And I go to the door and I open up the peephole just slightly yeah. so they don't see that, you know, like, because yeah. from outside you can see. The, click. Yeah, the, the, the thing moved yep. you know what I'm saying so I opened the door like tiny I opened the door like Shh. I was like this is like a little little old lady yeah and I'm like who the heck is this yeah she's like hello and I was like oh my god she might have heard me yeah 
<laughs> so so then <clears throat> I see her walk start walking away and she turns because you could see the hallway at yeah. my mom's old apartment building in Queens, by the way, Queens, yeah. New York. And uh, and she turns and I hear the ding from the elevator. I said, good, she left. Yeah. So what a coward was I. Yeah. So I opened the door and I go, are you still there? She goes, yeah, I'm waiting for, the, for my sister to come out of the elevator. I'm waiting for the other sister to come out of the elevator. Oh, wow. So she had gotten ahead. So yeah. God knew that. Yeah. You know, I, I realize now God knew that in yeah. hindsight. Yeah. And so this is how powerful God is. Mm -hmm. And he can be every single place that we can talk to him in our home. Yeah, and there could yeah. be an entire mission out there doing something. Yeah. And there can be uh, people internationally doing a conference. And there can be all these people moving for God. Right. And God is right there with them. That's how great and powerful our God is. Amen. And so. They come back around and they say, we think you need to hear this. I want to read something for you. Yeah. You know, and then they read to me, you know, uh, the eyes of God are rovering through the earth looking for those whose heart is real. And, you know, whose heart is really real and ready for him. Right. Yeah. Right. So he's looking for whose heart is ready for him. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, have you ever heard the saying? When the student is ready, the master will appear. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is making you say this? You yeah. know? Yeah. And she said, I don't know. I just feel like saying that to you. Wow. I was like, Whoa. And at that very moment, right? Yeah. You know, I don't know, I don't know if, I says, guys, we, we all joke around. We wrestle with our brothers and sisters and with our friends. Yeah, yeah. And you get punched in the stomach. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> it gets real. No. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah. and you gut get check. winded and you're like, need to jump. And you're like. <sighs> yeah, it's a gut check. Yeah. And so that's exactly what happened to me. The lady never touched me. Wow. And I was just like, God is real. And she said, come to our church for our Easter celebration. Here's the flyer. This is what we're here for. Mm. And she gave me the Easter celebration flyer. Did you go? I went. Yeah. After that experience? Yeah. I went. You know, and at the time, I was still kind of drinking, smoking, smoking, yeah. and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And... I had promised God, you know, when I was screaming at him earlier, mm -hmm. that if, if he showed himself to me, I would give everything up. Mm. But from that day forward, I didn't feel like an urge. No. He did it. Amen. Now, uh, you can say he's a soft God. He's not real. He's like, you know, but for God to be able to do that yeah. and I can't see him yeah. physically with my eye, yeah. like as a physical person, but he can do that from wherever he's at. And yeah. he can do that for every single person out there who calls on him. Yeah. Truth from the heart. Yeah. Really talks to him. Yeah. How, That's a powerful God. So when did you get saved? I, uh, 15 years ago, actually. Wow. I was 30 years old, so I just gave my age up. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> if, if For those of you guys that can do your math, yeah. you know what. Basic age, math. If, if any of my students watching, you better get that right. You better know how old he is. Yeah. Yeah. So then I started like now getting into the word of God yeah. for real. Then I started yeah. reading the Bible. And as soon as I came back in the house, I gave my life to Christ. I looked and you know, I, I Googled and I said, how do I give my life to Christ? And yeah. there were like Romans 10, 9 and 10. And then I went to it. And yeah. then in my home alone, I was like with God, you know what I mean? And my sick dog there, I, I started reading it and I gave my life to Christ right there. Mm. But it was like, I don't know if you ever seen the movies where like, like they're in the middle of a war. This is perfect. Like at, in that movie, like Saving Private Ryan, there's a scene where, where, where he gets in the middle of a war and he hears like, and then he finally realizes he's at D-Day. Yeah. And all of a sudden he goes silent. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. how I felt after yeah. coming back in from those two, two, two young ladies that yeah. were at the door, the older, well, the older ladies, right? <laughs> so, uh, young, young and the faith, young and the Lord. Young and the Lord. Yeah, so, yeah. They, so they left and they invited me to the Easter celebration. I come back inside and I hear like everything's, the TV is on, the dog is like, <laughs> like, like yeah. barking. And I'm like, yeah. and I look in the Bible, I look at the Google, I open up Romans 10, 9 and 10, and I gave my life to Christ right there. Yeah. And, no more urges to do anything. And Everything for, happened. For those of you guys who are watching, you guys are probably wondering, Romans, what, what, what is he referring to? He's referring to scripture that um, shares uh, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you'll be saved. So, 
And, and let me tell you, man, uh, for anybody going through a hard time as a father, as a as a as a man who may be homeless, uh, as a yeah. person who may be Which struggling. A lot, a lot of men watch this uh, uh, and they go through a lot as a person who may be struggling with addiction of any type yeah. of any type. You know, the minute you start turning your life truly over to God from your heart, cry yeah. out to him and let him know what's happening. Mm-hmm. He will start to move. Yeah. Like literally within two months, I had a full time job purpose. I had an, I had a small little studio. Yeah. It wasn't a big place. I had a small little studio. I had uh, money that was, you know, was coming in and, and within a year I was, a, I was in a, I was in a two bedroom. Yeah. And within two years, I had a small house. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. I went from homeless to, to like having a two bedroom house in two yeah. years. Yeah. And it was like, whoosh. yeah. And I get changed in my life. Mm. And it's not just, an, it, it's He. He yeah. changed my life. Yeah. There's a, you know, God has a blueprint um, for each of us. Um, you know, He knows the plans He has for us, plans to proper, prosper us and give us a, you know, a future. And, and I think we don't we don't look to that like we want what we want, thinking that it's the best for us. And a lot of us men, we go through life thinking, you know what? I'm the man. I'm gonna do whatever I want. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go get mine and and thinking that you're on your purpose, but you're not really on your purpose. At least not the purpose that God established you on this planet for. And a lot of men are walking around miserable, miserable, try, just just chasing the next best uh, thrill because they think. That's going to fulfill them, and and it doesn't. You might feel temporary um, satisfaction at that moment, but after that feeling is gone, you're like, why? Why am I even here? What's what? 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 And I think men have to get to the place where they they stop chasing the the superficial and start trying to figure out what is it that God placed me on this planet for? What's my purpose here? Yeah, you know, and it's very difficult to get there unless you unless they go through the same path that you went through. Uh, acknowledging, you know, uh, I'm, you know, Jesus is Lord. He, he was raised from the dead. I make him the Lord of my life. Let me let me find out what my purpose is on this planet, and let me fulfill that. And uh, as they say, be on their business, you know. Yeah. And from that day forth, man, I, I, I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But 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 it all, you know, uh, it, it's it, you know, an apocalypse. Uh, I say apocalypse, but but that's how I say it in in Spanish, apocalipsis. But in, uh, you know, so in, in Apocalypses, right? Revelation, right? In Revelations, right? In the book, of, the last yeah. book of the Bible, um, and it says that he's there waiting at the door, waiting for you. Yeah. You know, so open that door up, open it up to him, and he'll change your life. Yeah. You know, he'll rearrange the place. Yeah. And he'll make it look beautiful. Yeah. And whatever it is that you had pictured in your mind about what this place look, looked like or yeah. was going to look like when it was all done. Yeah. It's ten times greater. It's a hundred times greater. It's a thousand times greater, because yeah. he has plans of good and not of evil for us, man. Yeah, and, and that's and, truth. And we can we 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 live life like we have to carry the burdens of the world on our shoulders. Yeah, for our family, for our friends, at work, like we, and it's difficult for us to shut that off, and which is why uh, the self deletion rate among men in Western civilization is extremely high. It's because they, they, they don't think that there's nothing else left to live for. That like they, they, This can't be life. My, my life can't just be me working and never enjoying the benefits of my labor and everybody else keeps pulling for me. No, it's, it, God, God has you here for way more than that. Yeah, and I think, it does. And, you know, and what's, and what's amazing about men, for the most part, you give a man purpose, and he's going to run in that direction and fulfill that purpose. Right, and yeah, people like um, I'll give you an example. Like one one of the the co- common examples that hopefully people can get is the military. You give military men, like you give men a purpose in the military, right? And you give them an identity. They're willing to 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 die for that purpose. And you know what's and amazing that, about that? You know what's amazing about that? Yeah, yeah. That, that 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 we do belong to an army. Yeah. For for he is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a God of armies. Yeah. You know, and we're his army. Yeah. And now, I, now and we need to. Should yeah, be him. It is. In Galatians 2.20, it says that, yeah. that, that our identity dies, right? Yeah. And he says that when, when Christ was crucified on that cross, that I, I was crucified with him. Yeah, yeah. And now we're resurrected and new beings in yeah. Christ. Now, check this out. What's up? 
in, in the military, it's all about discipline. Yeah. So we have to be disciplined and really stick to the word of God yeah. and not try to change it to, to, to be in accordance with what's happening in the world. But uh-huh. we need to change, mm. you know, because because the military doesn't doesn't try to to uh, be in accordance with what's going on out there. Yeah. They stay in here. Yeah. You have to do it according to these rules, yeah. according to this Bible, according to this and, and method. You, and when you give men that, they walk in it. Yeah. They walk yeah. in it, you know. Again, like most men just need uh, a direction and a blueprint or a map, okay? Yeah. This is where the treasure is. Take this map and go. Yeah. The map is in the Word of God. Yeah, definitely. And listen, and, and it's not like uh, there, there'll never be any any other obstacles. There's obstacle. I had an obstacle this week, you know. <laughs> I had an obstacle right before I came here. And they told me, yeah. you're not going to be able to go anywhere for five days. And I said, no, I, you're wrong yeah. about that, you know. Uh, I'm going. I'm going tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And and my wife and I started praying, and we got into like this very like spiritual battle. And I'm I'm here now. Yeah. It's a day. <laughs> you know, I I your, your words have power. Those words, you know, they they will move forward and become manifest. Mm. You know, so I mean, you can use them for evil, right? You can use them for good or evil. You can use them for anything you want. Yeah. You know, either way. They're going to come true. true. It says that that prosperity or death is in your word. Yeah, you know. So death, power of the tongue. So how did you how, how do you translate that into leading as uh, the the priest of your home? So, and so we consistently um, uh, are you know we stay in prayer, uh, we read the word of, of God, and we're consistently uh, praising, worshiping. At so, home, you know. So, so let me let me as 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 the man. How do you model that? So you could you want your kids and your wife to to follow you? How do you model that? Well, they they have to see me doing it. Yeah, you know. So, um, like, you're talking in about like in a functional way, like in yeah, a every function. day. Yeah, because here's the thing: we could talk about this, right? Like, we I, um, I've been saved for 25 years. Um, 20. How old am I? No, 27 years. Has it been 27 years? 2004. Yeah. No. Wait. Seven. Yo, yeah, it's been seven, 27 years. Wow. So I've been saying 27 yeah. years, right? Yeah. And uh, it took me a, a while to get to, to the place where leading as a man of God in my home has become normal, right? But for like a man reading this, right, who has no real connection to faith but really would like to be a good leader in their home, how would they model that? Like, like function that, like, how do they function? Just well, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I at the beginning when I first started introducing, like, um, the the word of God, even with my daughter, and I get you know, but I wasn't initially. She wasn't. We we really weren't practicing the word of God at home. Yeah. And so it was like, she was a young girl, and then I I would literally just take her to to church. Yeah. I would then at home you know, go over the word of God with her and like, you know, go over, like, uh, I would have this book of, uh, Bible stories. Right. Yeah. And we would, it, we would read it. Like, instead of reading like uh, secular books to go to sleep, I would read that to her. So that's with a young child, excuse me. But now there's, uh, young people who are older. Right. And I came into, um, to now into my new family. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and so what we do is we literally, like, I, I get home. Sometimes when I get home early, uh, music is just playing in the background. It's, yeah. it's gospel music. It's upbeat gospel music, and it's just playing there. Yeah. You know, and um, it, it really, truly fills the home. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about the music. Yeah. It matters how the impact that, 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 that this music is having on my children, you know. Um, and it's, it's a big part, right? When we really think about even just the story of, of, um, of David and Saul, right? Yeah. Right. He that 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 string instrument that he was playing yeah, yeah. could cast away that spirit, yeah. and that's one single person. Mm-hmm. Now imagine these, these 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 this music that our children listen to nowadays, right? Yeah. Um, it, 
they listen to it. And there's more than one person on that stage. There's more than person, one person behind the music there doing all the synthesize, doing everything else. Yeah. So imagine how many, how many different sources of power are going into that music. Now, if I'm going to truly want my children to, to be a certain way, then, then I have to shift them from that yeah. to this upbeat frequency yeah. that's going to now glorify not only God, yeah. but it's going to edify them. And how? How do you, how do you, let, uh, how do you shift them into that? In the car, mm. I play music. Mm. Even, even, oh, but we don't listen to rap. So I put Christian rap. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, but oh, well, uh, let's listen to some pop music. Okay. Let's turn on the uh, pop radio station for, for Christ. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're listening to like, King and Country. We listen to whatever, you know, um, um, modern, like, day music that yeah. is, is, is Christ related. So I had uh, a, uh, just this, uh, my wife sent me something earlier. Um, uh, uh, I would consider him uh, a friend uh, on on YouTube, uh, Ruslan. He had a uh, uh, a he did a, a episode, and he mentioned about uh, Christian nightclubs, right? But he does Christian rap himself. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think I heard of Ruslan. Yeah, yeah, and um, the you know he said you know he's up in the air about the the Christian nightclub, and uh, the truth of the matter about that right is uh people are both drawn to music and they're both and they're also drawn to social settings they're drawn to music and social settings they are more drawn to to social settings but the music sets the atmosphere for whatever social setting they're going to be in right yeah and they have all different and the thing is music it's connected more to culture than it is to sin it's the it's the sinful music that we have started to say, hey, this is what this culture is about. A, a good example is hip hop. When people think of hip hop, they're not thinking of um, like wholesome music. They're thinking of all the the debauchery and the trash yeah. out there, right? Uh, and so they are connecting the music that's horrible to the culture. Now, the music that is horrible could be affecting the culture. Yes, but hip hop itself is a reflection of the culture. The culture doesn't have to be what the music says. It's just a style of music that's connected to the culture. Yeah. Now, as you were saying, shifting that that frequency, right? Letting the kids hear the culture that they like that is actually giving glory and honor to God. Yeah. If they are in, the, your kids are young, so that's, your daughter's. Yeah, they're also still fairly, fairly young. The the, the 18, 15, yeah, so, and then 11, yeah, so the, even 12. In a, in a Christian nightclub, is a social setting, but Christian music is playing, and there can be genuine fellowship happening there, and their frequency is not causing them, or your daughter who, may, who might be 18, wants to just have a nice time with some good Christian friends, not making her think bad about what she's doing. And still think, wow, I'm in this setting. Everybody's loving on each other. The music is dope, and it's talking about Jesus and glorifying God. I can, I can rock with this, and I think that's that's very important. I mean, I mean, it's a way. I, I really do think that that it's a way that you can start to touch young people's hearts, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, then it leads into to more. Yeah, you know, it leads into more. Like, yeah. like for example, like uh, uh, I like to listen sometimes to Bryson Gray. Um, Brother Clement this is yeah. is another is another uh, rapper out yeah. of uh, Virginia that that I you know amazing music right so when they use biblical Bible verses now I see my my eleven year old asking me well, what why did he say that yeah and so, so uh, now they're going like discipleship now they're going I said well you want to know what it says there like instead of googling like uh, uh, YouTube crap that's yeah. not have so let's 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 open up open up open up your phone. Like, go go to go to that Bible verse, yeah. and then I'm, I'm like, read it back, read it back. Yeah. Because I'm driving, so read it back. So now I'm, you know, I'm getting them to read the Word of yeah. God. And they're like, oh, oh, well, it makes sense, yeah. yo. It flows with it, yo. Yeah. It flows with it, yeah. you know. And so they're like, you know, so so these are the conversations I'm having. And you know, the minute they get in the car, I'm driving them to school. You know, I I, I begin prayer. Yeah. So I pray at home. Before we leave, sometimes, and then in the car, you know, and it, it sounds like, it sounds like, oh, that's overkill. It's like it's never too much prayer. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, so uh, so I pray with them in the morning on the way to, you know, to 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 school. I you know I pray for them even on my way to school, uh, uh, my way to to my job rather. Yeah. I, I pray consistently, like I stay in prayer. Yeah. I mean, um, then. You know, I we do like other small projects at home. You know, like like stuff that's cool, like like little uh, arts and crafts and stuff that has to be that sometimes that it's it's related to the Bible. It's God related, you know. Yeah. So now they're doing arts and crafts, and they're like, oh look at look at this, mine is better, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, so we do things like this, and then we we um we consi- we consistently go to church. Um, uh, I have you know have them get him. Oh, you want to do dance? All right, let's, let's join the you know. The dance yeah. ministry yeah, yeah. at church, you know, I have them doing that. Like, um, and then w- my wife and I, we we consistently, like every single night. All right, everybody, get in the living room. We're gonna pray. Yeah, you know, like we're, you know, it's the, you know, this is our first ministry. Yeah, God, God gave us this ministry. Yeah, you know, and and so we have to really, really, be completely, completely. Uh, um, sacrificial about it, you know. Yeah. Sacrificial about our homes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but think about it, it, right? That that here, that there is a, a is a, a modern. Well, that that traditional thought doesn't fare well with modern men because they're not looking at being a husband or approaching relationships in a sacrific, sacrificial way. That's a, a an expectation of us as men to be to operate sacrificially to with our families to it's a shame because yeah. you know um you know a lot i have friends too that you know that that I, that they're coming they're coming they're coming yeah. they're coming to god they're coming to god little by little yeah, yeah. but they may i may be the only bible they're reading yeah you know what i mean so so um if, if there's anybody out there we may be the only bible for you sure. but Maybe not, you know. Who, it depends on where you're at with everything and and, and your and your uh, path. But the reality of this, right, is is a lot bigger, right? That uh, I hear them complain sometimes, and they, they'll tell me, "Oh, my wife doesn't do this. She doesn't do this." Sometimes it's physical stuff, like intimate stuff, right? Yeah. They don't do this. Don't, oh, my wife uh, always nag. I was like, so I'm like, so how come my wife doesn't do that? Yeah. Because I mean. To a certain extent, yeah, we, we don't, you know, there's things we, we have to, um, you, you know, we, we go over and sometimes and everything's not perf- perfectly yeah. like, but I don't really ever, even if I like have a, a, a very minimal like, like discussion with her, I won't even call it an argument. Yeah. Like, I love her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Completely. Yeah. And, yeah. and the interesting thing about it is that she loves me back. Yeah. And then I never, I, I'm never lacking anything from her. Yeah. spiritually yeah, yeah. or physically and vice versa you know what i mean yeah. and and we come to this i don't that you know because good, I, I started to 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 have this agape type of love with her you know what i mean i started to have this sacrificial love you know think about it right now this is a really interesting I, i'm just coming to me now it's like jacob right had the, had his wife had his family yep so jacob was going through this land and he became Israel and he was sacrificial, right? Yeah. And this is just a very like, but you see later with Christ again, yeah. right? So, so you see <coughs> Jacob now, right? Yeah. Jacob goes through his land and he, he battles with God. Yeah. Right. And then, but before all this happens, he goes to his, his family. He says, go, go that way. And and then he he sends his his wife and kids his family he sends everybody over yeah, yeah. that they're safe, and then he tells all his workers you go yeah and th- I mean we're not talking about like he had two cows yeah no, he had, uh, and he had children and, and family like this his yeah. wife right he had two wives right and then it, we're not talking about like fifteen people yeah. I mean, he sent everybody. In a village. <laughs> he sent an entire village. Yeah, yeah. Like hundreds of of, of, of cattle and everything. Yeah. He sends them all over and he says, I'll stay here to fight with this thing that's coming. Yeah. Because he felt it, right? Something is coming. So he sends everybody and he stays there. He sacrificed himself. Yeah. And, and guess what? You know, at the end, he's like, I'm not stopping the fight. And, the, and then 
And then this being tells him, what's your name? He says, Jacob. He said, you need to let me go. I don't yeah. have time for this. Uh-huh. Yeah. I got to go. Yeah. I got other stuff. I got to, you know, like, I, I can do it. Yeah. And so he goes, I'm just talking, you know, layman's terms here. But you should read this at some point. Uh, uh, so, so then what happens is he goes, I'm not stopping this fight, this sacrificial fight, until you bless me. Bless me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he so g- sticks his finger in his in the socket of his hip. Yep. Set it off place. <laughs> right? He goes, whoosh. Yeah, yeah. And he gives him a blessing. He said, yeah. from now on you'll be called Israel. Yeah. That's and it and it translates in Hebrew to like perseverance, right? Yeah. And then all the nations start to come. From, from from his lineage, right? It all comes from from the father of of the nations, Abraham to Jacob to, and this thing explodes yeah. afterwards. Why? Because he persevered. Yeah. So there's there's something to be learned and gained from that, right? That that through that perseverance, even in our own homes, that sacrificial giving, mm-hmm. Christ sacrificed himself for us. Yeah. You know he and and in that sacrifice he redeemed all of us who truly believe in him and the minute we truly believe in him right then everything changes like we stand in authority and we can literally stand in authority and it is not it's not a physical beating authority to our families you know you're not beating our wives we're not like beating the heck out of our children it's just straight up real love yeah you know and sometimes Love is a stern. Sometimes love is not like easy, yeah, well, you know? It, but love is... And it's a choice. Yeah, it's a choice and it's a um, a motive as well. If you're doing something, it may not be easy on the person, but it's definitely beneficial. It may of not be course, easy on yeah. you. Like imagine, you know, you, you're telling your child they really want this specific item. It's going to make them the happiest child in the world, but you know it's not going to be good for them, at least right now. Right, you, sometimes we gotta love them enough to say no. It I mean, hurts me to say say no to you, but I know that this might not be the best thing for you right now. I mean, listen, it, it, God is like that with us. Yeah, you know, yeah. so so He made us in His likeness. Yeah, you know, so it just you know goes to prove that this is the way we have to be with our children. It's very true. This is the way we have to be with our kids. Yeah, and as the head of our household too, if 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 something my wife if I see it's going to be detriment and it's going to affect my wife in a negative way, I'm going to tell her, yeah. hey, babe, you, know, you shouldn't be doing that because uh, I'm just letting you know that that's going to cause this and this to happen. Now, you can choose to listen to me, but if you don't do it, I'm telling you what will come from it. Yeah, this will be the, this so this is going to be the result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you definitely, definitely have to do this instead. But... If you want, we could come to a, a different arrangement where we can see how th- doing this, I can work myself into it, so it's yeah. not all you. Yeah, you know, and That's so what leadership is, and so and so we're yeah. we're, we're we're literally guiding, uh, completely guiding our home, but yeah. without God in it, then you're just going, you're just walking around in circles, yeah. literally. Yeah. Right. So so the first thing we got to do is spend time with him. You know, <laughs> we spend time with him. He gives us instructions. And then we can, we can move, you know. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, it's interesting that if your wife is praying the same way, if your yeah. wife is moving with God the same way, she, God is telling her the same thing. Yeah. You know, and it, it happens too. You know, in in evangelism, you know what I mean. Uh, uh, I've gone out with with other brothers to like some real dark areas, not not only in New York, New Jersey. Connecticut, but like out there in the West Coast, Texas, and other places, you know, yeah. and. Um, and we go into our dorm, or we go into 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 the different hotel rooms. And in the morning, I'm like, "Yo, man, I was just reading the Bible. And what, what were you reading?" Yep. And it's the <laughs> same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's that that is not a coincidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And then we we start praying, and then we go out. I mean, you can't approach anything without the wor- word of God yeah. and truly praying yeah. and to be, you know, for, for, for coverage. You know what I'm saying? Because, because you go out there, you haven't prayed to nothing. Then 
you, you literally like have given open realm to whatever demonic entities yeah. are out there. In these, yeah. I mean, these, some of these places are dark. Definitely, definitely, so uh, a coverage there. I mean, I, I went to this place called Park Row in Texas, right? Yeah. Like the 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 level the of, in Texas. No, the level. I just went out there to evangelize because yeah. God God called us to go there. So yeah. we're like, let's go. Okay. You know, so so um um. Why, why 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 Park Row? Why do you think God called you to Park Row, Texas? Well, He called us to He called us to a couple of places there because that place is uh, has a lot of dark dark darkness, and right. I, I believe that God wants us to really. It says to it, it's, you know the Word of God says to go to every corner of the world. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. um, like I said, so my upbringing, right? So so understand that everything we're going through now, not only as husbands. Not only in our personal lives, growing up, and uh, and everything that we've been through, God is going to use that for good. Yeah. So, because I grew up in the hood, <laughs> right? Because I grew up in in, in in guns were pointed at my head and yeah. rifles and shotguns and knives, right? Yeah. As I grew up, then I know now how to that that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pee on myself. Like you know, yeah, yeah. I know okay. Wait, let's think about this. And now, with that word, with that Holy Spirit that dwells inside, yeah. you know, God guides it and goes whew, to the point where people will fall on their knees and give their life to Christ. People start crying right in the place yeah. and give their life to Christ. You know what I mean? Uh, um, so it, it's amazing when you start seeing this. Yeah. Uh, God is not a weak God. He is a powerful God. You know, that, that he can use me, right? This guy that used to be, like, in the streets and, like, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And he can use you and the same way he can use me. Yeah. And, and it'll change not only your life, but the lives of those who you come in contact with. Amen. And even more so, your home, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's a, a thing that men, if they grasp could start seeing their families, their their life, level up in amazing ways. I, I, amen. Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. So now you have, uh, you're married, you have a home. Uh, you also recently uh, graduated with uh, a master's in, uh, what was it again? I just recently graduated with a master's yeah. in digital communications. Digital communication. Yeah, 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 yeah. So digital communications, yeah. uh, so uh, how, and how, media and digital media and uh, public relations. Okay, how important was that for you to do? Uh, being a, a father and a husband. Well, I, I I always wanted to go for the masters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even before I got remarried, uh, and I always wanted to know and understand how I was going to do this. Yeah. Because it costs money. It takes yeah, up time. Yo, college costs a lot of money. I got I got I got words with, with colleges and universities and the the government student loan system. I got words. A lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and so now that I have I have four kids now, you know? Yeah. So um I have four kids, my wife, home, uh, other bills, just like everybody else. I prayed about it. I yeah. prayed about it. Yeah. I prayed about it. And I ended up going to college, uh, back to college and back to, uh, for, for my master's, um, at a very good school. And, uh, uh, I ended up graduating with my master's and all I had to pay was the taxes on it. Really? So, so, uh, I wish, I, 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 again, right. I went to prayer, right. It says you, you should seek a quiet area. Yeah. Right. And, and, and talk and, and, uh, pray and really like truly truly be with him yeah yeah uh and he'll talk back to you Amen. you know sometimes it may sound like your own thoughts yeah but you know you didn't have that thought before you went in that room yeah so it ain't yours it's, yeah, it's, it's coming from a higher place sometimes you might hear him audibly you know what i mean sometimes you might see you close your eyes and you see it you see what's happening you like yeah, you yeah. literally get to the point where you see things yeah. Like you see things happening, like like it's like a movie almost. Like you're like what, you know? And uh, it's amazing that God 
can talk to you this way. Uh, and, and his eye is that like that was that was his intention from the very right. beginning. I mean, it, I mean, it says in the word of, of God, right? That yeah. that you you could you can you can go out there, you can you can heal people, you can drink poison, you can do whatever you're doing out there. You don't, can don't be evangelizing, out there poison, yeah, right? just, You could be evangelizing, yeah. right? The word of God and doing all these things, and. You know, miracles could be happening at, yeah. at the foot of your uh, feet. You know, I like got the yeah, base yeah. of your feet and at your hands and everything. And you may reach that day to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, that faithful day you reach to him. And he may say, I never knew you. Yeah. Like, so so there's a lot to that's, say, right? That's one of those things where I'm like, I, that's one thing I don't want ever to happen. You know, we got to be with so him. Much. We got to spend time. Yeah. Our hearts got to be in the right place. Um, understanding that, yeah, God, God is a blesser, but let's not get so oversaturated in our thinking concerning the blessing that we receive. Let us solely be considerate and and be concerned about the blesser, and not, not blesser. only not only look at him as the blesser, but just look at him as as the sovereign God. Whether we receive what we feel we should have be blessed with hey. or not, hey, I get down on my knees. Yeah, literally, and uh, and you know uh, I don't put my phone on on the coffee table or on my couch. Yeah, I take my phone, I take my wallet, and I take my keys. Yeah, and I set them down on the floor, and I literally get down all the way down, face forward, yeah. and I pray with them, and yeah. I talk to them, and I spend time with them, yeah, yeah. and I say, all of this is yours. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. You know, yeah, all of it is yours. At least in control and give you know? it to God. Yeah, and it's 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 amazing because we we can look at like David, right? And that's what he was always consistently moving in, right? Like, uh, you can take everything away from me, but don't take you away from me. Yeah. Don't take your hand away from me. Yeah. Always be with me. Always stay with me. The you can lose everything, yep. but if you have God, it's always going to come back. And it's gonna be multiplied. Amen. You know, um, again, that, that even goes to speak to our families, right? Yeah. We can have it all. Yeah. You have a beautiful house, a mansion, and and, and you could be miserable. Facts. Or you could have like a little two bedroom apartment or one bedroom apartment. Yeah, your family, uh, four of us in there, and and be completely happy. Yeah. And God will begin to bless you at that point. Yeah. You know, yep. you're faithful with the little. He's going. He's gonna increase yeah. you. Possessions don't make you rich. He's going to increase you. Yeah. He's going to increase you. I, I know from fact. I know from um, my own faith. I know from my own experience. He will increase you. He will increase you. Continue to increase and increase and increase and move forward, you know? Amen. Amen. Yeah, definitely. So you have a podcast. Well, yeah. I, we pray, I guess that's another thing we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about your podcast. So my wife and I, uh, we prayed about it. We have a ministry. It's called Bits Ministries. It's it's, it's that Bits. B I T C. Yeah. B I T C. Bits. B I T. B I T S. B I T S. Yeah. B I T S. And um, uh, it stands for bringing in the sheaves. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so it's Bits Ministries. Actually, we have like we we do shirts as well. This is one of our shirts. And okay. so. Um, um, El El Leon. This one says El León de Judas. De Judas. So this is the line of Judah. Absolute authority. Absolute authority over all creation. Oh, all creation. Come on. Apocalypse 5.5. Cinco cinco, Revelations 5.5. Five. Yeah. You know, and so um, uh, so we we have that. So you can look for, for bits uh, as well. Uh, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, yeah. Okay. So so the, the, the podcast just started um, uh, recently. Yeah. And so... Uh, my, I'll do it in, uh, in Spanish because I do believe that um, if if I know two languages, then I should be going in yeah, yeah. On, in both languages. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, my wife is my wife is Nigerian, so she she does it in English nice. with an amazing accent. Yeah. And uh, is she uh, which um, tribe is it? Yoruba or Igbo? Igbo. Igbo. Okay. Yeah, my wife is Igbo, and um, and so she she she'll, she'll I, do messages in English and I'll do messages in Spanish and we come out weekly. Yeah, I I did a a, a DNA test. I'm like 85 percent Nigerian. Yeah, so you yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah, you look you look you got I you got her. Igbo features. I got I got Igbo features. Yeah, because you know <laughs> no I, because I've been around her a lot now. Yeah, yeah. So like I I I start to understand like. 
the different features from the different tribes. And like the, the, I mean, there's a lot of different tribes, but there's like four major yeah. ones there. Oh, so. I'm like, so I'm very far removed from the, the transatlantic slave trade to uh, having um, being mixed with Puerto Rican and uh, Carib Indian and uh, or Carib Native American or Native whatever and a whole bunch of stuff I mixed with. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm originally from El Salvador. El Salvador. I was born there in El Salvador, yeah. and uh, I'm from this place called Departamento de La Paz. In this in this uh, smaller town called San Pedro Massawat, or oh, as my cousin says, yeah. St. Peter's of Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> but, but it's not. It's called San yeah. Pedro de Massawat. Those are uh, all uh, uh, Nahuatl language, and and it comes from the from the old um, native yeah. uh, natives of that land. So, yeah. uh, and it, and, it, and they were all through the the uh, the, Mem- the Americas as well. So, um, and, and I mean, you know, going back to like. You know, knowing your history, right? I think it's also important that that we pray for our families generationally. Yeah, agreed. You know, so I mean, there be there may be things that are happening in your household that that may be connected to something that one of your forefathers made a pact with, yeah. some sort of being that is not God. Yeah. You know, and so um, that that's just a, a you know a revelatory thing to happen, even in, if, to me. Like, in you know, I started praying generationally like for any generational curse for every single pact that has been made in the past two and three and four and five generations back that they're completely broken off of my household you know and i I, you know it's praying with power it's not praying like oh god i really hope you have time for me yeah and if you see fit that i you know, it's not, it's not that. <laughs> I mean, the word yeah. of God tells us to come boldly through his throne. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, think about it, right? Moses himself, right? He, he, he didn't, you know, he, he said, I don't want your angel to go with me. Yeah. I want you yeah, yeah. to go with me. I want you, God, yeah, to yeah. go with me. And what did he say? What did his father say? Yeah. What did our father say? Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how would we feel, right? I, I think, I think I heard this somewhere, and it, it made so much sense, right? How would we feel if our child was at the next door neighbor asking for something? Can you buy me a pair of shoes? Yeah. Can you do this for me? It would be complete. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. It would be completely like I. We probably become irate, right? Right. You'd be yeah. like, what? The, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm here. No, no, I'm no. here. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, so God wants well, we, us to we, come we, to we him. We don't want that because it's embarrassing. But yeah, God, God I, wants I think, us to I'm come thankful. to him. Stat, like yeah. now, you speak to me. Yeah, yeah. That's a, the beautiful thing about having a, a relationship with uh, the creator. Um, and also going going to him with the, the right heart, the right motives. Because uh, th- that, that's where the blessing actually lies. Because then you'll be able to see God in what he gives and what he doesn't give. Of course. Yeah. And you know, there's a way to approach God, even though we're going to be bold when yeah. we approach him, that there's also a process, right? That we go to him with prayer, thanksgiving, and, yeah, like Jesus, and, like, and we give up, you know, like our sins to him. Yeah. You know, and then he's like, okay, you're coming to me straight up like a man here now. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're being thankful. You're, you know, you're... you're 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 coming to me with all your sins that I already know. I just want to see if you're gonna tell me, <laughs> yeah. you know. And now you're gonna, you know, because this is like it's a process. Yeah. And so if you don't know how to pray, that's how you pray. Yeah. I appreciate even Jesus Himself taking the time to, to show us uh, how to pray in Matthew. Yeah. Right. And I think we 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 look we look at prayer like I'm gonna go and ask. For what I want, and I'm going to expect to get what I want. And there's an expectation in in faith. There's a there's an expectation there, level of faith there, 100. Uh, percent God is is bigger than whatever blessing you want. He the, the reason why you can receive it is because He's bigger than all of that, right? Like I, I just like for me, like I just want I, I just want God. Like yeah. give me God. I know. 
the, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I, I just want, give me God. Like, and I know I trust God enough that everything will fall into place. But I also know that there's some things I need to go to the before the throne for and need to make my request known. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray because I trust in God. The yeah. blessing, yes, thank you so much. Okay, let me put the blessing aside for a minute. And let me just focus on God. I hate you know? God. God is faithful, man. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he'll, he's definitely going to come through every time. Sometimes yeah. it may not be exactly what you want. Yeah. But it's what, if you really truly let him work in you and yeah. with you yeah. and through you, then it'll be what you need. Amen. You know, it, it, you know, it's like we, we may think one way, but it's not according to our understanding, sure. you know. And we, once we really relinquish the control to him, knowing that he knows what we're petitioning him for, it happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it happens in a bigger way than we think. Yeah. So uh, it, it's amazing how he truly is listening to us. Yeah. You know, and he hears even the e even the prayers that we have in silence, like even our thoughts. He can even hear the thoughts, yeah. you know, and, and like, Lord God, I, you know, even though you may not have prayed it out loud, he hears that, yeah. too. Yeah. You know, and he he'll he'll come forth. Uh, and it, we, we should w try to walk righteous, though. Yeah. You know, we, we should really, truly be trying to move, you know, and it, it, we can't, you know. You know, yeah, I remember this old song, like it's a classic yeah. rap song. Maybe some of you heard it. Um, Ain't no half stepping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's I right. believe it was EPMD, right? What was Ain't no half stepping. So uh, yeah. we can't be half stepping either. Yeah, yeah. We can't be one foot comp like in the world, and then you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I know it's 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 a little hard sometimes. We feel it, we find it hard because anytime we find the shift of us having done something for 20 and 30 years and 15 yeah. years or however many years been on this earth, right? To have to shift into something. Yeah. It, it's like, it's like, it's like really having to move. Yeah. You know, sometimes disassociate uh, acquaintances and friends that, yeah. or, or even doing things that, that you don't find comfortable at the beginning. Right. Yeah. But, but then there's no growth. Yeah. Right. So so it, it, it goes back to I mean, even just the mere fact like of us as men going to church. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. Right. Because yeah, that, that 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 uh, that number you, you came up with that or you, you said that there's a uh, suicide is is the biggest uh, among like. What's that? Yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's a big it's, a it's an issue. Yes, it's an issue, it's for, an issue for, men. for men. Now, this is interesting. Right. Because I was reading this this um, this article in The Economist. Yeah. Secular, yeah. So they did a they did a research study with scientists and psychologists, and they came to the conclusion that the majority of people who are who go to church, yeah. That that um, that that uh, crimes of self despair and crimes uh, or, or or deaths of despair rather. Uh, decrease nominally yeah if you just physically go, go. to church yep so so if you just are so they they're secular yeah this is secular <laughs> news right the economist so if you just move yourself physically from your couch or the street or wherever you're at Let's go to church Get you to church. Just <laughs> sit in this chair. Yeah, yeah. That your chances of death have in suicide. Yeah. Self deletion. Decrease. Yeah. Nominally. Yeah. So there's it's and if it's less than it becomes now like less than a like a two percent. Like, wow. like so like what happened? Yeah. So it's interesting because by you just sitting there, right? Now we could be sitting anywhere. But if you're not in church, the level of yeah suicide, in, 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 you know, like so we're gonna say self deletion because you two be funny with words, so they, they, yeah. So we'll say self deletion instead of the S word. No, you two gotta be playing yourselves. 
All right, self deletion. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So it's sort of uh, uh, self omission. Yeah, from society. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, the, I mean, but this is I, I'm gonna just repeat. I, yeah. I didn't write this. Yeah. This is the Economist. Yeah. You know. So, so the, this the level of death goes down. The level of 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 of, of termination in people's lives goes down, down. immediately. From by you just being there, and as men, and if this is an issue, depression or anything else, all these things will go nominally away from us. Yeah, if we just physically are in church. Yeah, I mean, not my words. This is this is a study. You can look it up. You can look it up. Yeah, and and there's graphs there showing you that the larger percentage of the people who now go to church, right? Are women? Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. So the number of suicides goes down greater in women because they're more yeah, often in church. Yeah, yeah. But that's what it looks like when when it says that He will give us life and life more abundantly. Like that abundant living is not just having things; it's about just being able to live and and appreciate the life that you have. Amen. That you're living in Him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It, so, brother, uh, it, it's a lot to be said, yeah. right, for us just as men to go to church. Yeah. You know, just go to church. Yeah. And everything begins to shift. That's the that's the word today. Like, go to church and let your life begin to shift today. Uh, I, I, and, if, and if you are looking for a church, you, you don't know where to start, uh, shoot me a message. Leave a comment down below uh, on whatever format you're watching, and I will look... At, and you sent me a zip code or what city you live in. I hope you find a good Bible-centered, Holy Spirit-filled church that believes in the Word, believes in worship, believes in fellowship. Uh, I'll, I'll help you guys out. I personally, I have a, I have a, a Spanish ministry at uh, NewCovenantNJ.com, at New Covenant Church yep. of, uh, right here in, in Plainfield, and that we meet on Saturdays at 6 p.m., yeah. you know, so... If you're interested, if you speak Spanish, you want to come listen to the word in Spanish, bring your family, yep. you can come there as yep. well. NewCovenantNJ.com, yeah. right in Plainfield. Yeah. Um, and then we have two services in English as well um, on Sundays at 9 a.m. and at 11 a.m. So there's plenty. And if, and if you want to check us out online, we, we're there as well yeah. on Facebook and yeah. YouTube. So as we close out, share it with uh, the Harrison Extended family. Uh, your podcast and how they can follow you on that. Yeah, so you can follow us on the Bits podcast by just going to your search engine on Google and typing in Bring in the Sheaves podcast, or you can go to Spotify or iHeartRadio and just type in Bring in the Sheaves podcast. You can go to Android, um, any of your podcast platforms, and it should be in there. Uh, somewhere, uh, hopefully, uh, I'll send the, uh, the the screenshot. Yeah, are you are you on YouTube yet? No, I I didn't put it. Yeah, we're, I'm on YouTube, but I didn't put any YouTube episodes up. Like, oh, so, but I'll, I'll be Both. starting that. Yeah, man, do that. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, I've I've had other YouTube channels, but they're yeah. they're 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 not uh, Christian podcasts. They're not Christian gotcha. based. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, man. I appreciate you coming through and, and having this conversation with me. I think manhood is is essential. Biblical masculinity is essential for society. And if we operate within that in our homes, our homes will do better. As a result, our communities will do better. And, uh, uh, yeah, it starts with us. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and we, we got to get to church. Gentlemen, we got to get to church. Just go there. Let's go. Just be present. Yeah. It's like, you know, once we're present, God starts to move. Yeah. God starts to move. You know, it says, you know, that it, if you feel like, oh, I don't my faith is not high enough. I don't have enough faith. But right? the word of God says, you know, it comes by hearing and hearing the word yeah, of God. So sure. by you just sitting there, what starts to happen, what the economists didn't delve into is, is that one thing, right? Yeah. That you're listening to the word of God. What's, yeah. what's actually making people so that they could ask, what's actually making people stay alive when they go to church? Was it just to, to physically just go to church and they stay alive? No, it's what's happening in the church, right? Yeah, yeah. What you're listening to. Yeah. Yeah, so it's building us. Yeah, so get there. Right. Even listening to this is building you. Yeah, continue to listen at this place because it, it, it's it it and it takes a lot of work to put something like this together. You know, 
Uh, and I, I thank you, brother, for, for taking time out of your schedule to really even just, you know, have this ministry yeah. to really move forward because um, we need more men like you as well, you know, oh, amen. Uh, uh, to really push forward not only the word of God, but, you know, these values that we need to have in our homes, you know, so this, this Harrison's family value is, is it's, it's, it's to be cherished. Amen. Thank you for that. No, oh, definitely, man. No, it's a fact, though. It's truth, you know? Yeah. All right, bro. All right. So, guys, thank you guys so much for watching the, the podcast and for, for being with us. Greatly appreciate it. Um, if you have made it this far in the video and if you haven't hit the like button, please hit that like button right now. It'll let YouTube know or any other platform know that this is a video worth sharing out. And uh, if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Or if you're watching on any of the podcasts or listening, follow us. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the bell notification next to it. So it'll let you know when I go live or when I upload a new video like I'm doing right now. I greatly appreciate you all for watching. And uh, yeah, man, until the next uh, live or uh, podcast release, we out. Peace.